Now, when you are accessing Perusal, um, you will click on the assignment or the link from Blackboard and it will take you straight to the assignment, which is how you've come to this video. However, you can also backtrack and click on this assignments link at the top if you want to view other assignments that are available to you. Um, this is a great way for you to go back and look at assignments that you might have missed or that you might, uh, if you're getting ready for Socratic seminar and you need to look at a story, you can't quite remember what week it's in, you can view these as they um, accumulate throughout the course. Um, when you open a perusal assignment, you will have multiple parts. Um, typically, these will be video um, followed by text and often a video that follows that. Now, in the video component, you can add comments by clicking add comment here, and then you can leave your comment. It will pause the video wherever you are at. So if I'm playing the video and I hit add comment, it will pause the video this is uh, it will pause the video and allow you to leave the comment now make sure you hit submit otherwise that comment will start moving around um, but that's the way to comment in videos now you have a number of different formatting options you can also add emojis gifs um, links images you can create polls and you can mark your comments as anonymous if you would prefer to mark your comments as anonymous you are certainly more than welcome to um, i do recommend that you don't do that for all of your comments because we do want to know what you think and we do want your name attached to some of your ideas um, however if there are certain comments that you would rather leave anonymously that's absolutely fine now as you proceed throughout the video you can move on to the next part and most of your comments will be left in the text portion of the assignment. Now in the text portion of the assignment, you can leave comments in two ways. The default setting, what you will be what it will be set to when you open it is this annotate text. That's this A button up here. This will allow you to highlight a portion of the text and leave your comment this way. Um, now some PDFs that it doesn't recognize the text very well or it can just be kind of a pain to use that. You can also use this annotate figure option. That allows you to highlight an area of text that you would like to leave comments on, or you can just click and it will drop a pin if you would like to leave a comment that way. Um, let's say I want to mark this one anonymous, I will, and then hit submit. Now, as you start accumulating comments and your group comes, you know, reads through the assignment and more people are, are active in it, there will be a number of comments. And if you would like to view all of the comments, you can click this All Conversations button and it'll show you all of the different comments in the text um, that have been made. You can also sort those comments so you can see comments where you were mentioned or just your own comments if you would like to. Um, you can, as you uh, see these comments, you can star them if you would like to come back to them and it will collect them in these starred comments for you. You can also, if you feel like there is a need to report a comment for inappropriate content, offensive content, or if you feel like somebody has plagiarized your comment, um, you can click this button and it will uh, notify me that there is something I need to look uh, look at. Um, this does remain completely anonymous to the comment to the person who posted it. So you should feel comfortable doing that if at any point you need to. Um, as well, when you are replying to comments, you can of course just type your comment here. However, one feature that many students like to take advantage of is tagging. When you hit the at button, it allow you to tag a person uh, in your group or you can tag me. So if there is something that you want me to look at, a question that you have, a clarification that you'd like me to make, I encourage you to tag me wherever you need to. That notifies me via email and that means I'll get in there as soon as I can and I know exactly where to go to answer that question for you. Another great thing about perusal to be aware of, particularly in a literature course like this one, where you will be writing about these texts, is that it will generate the citation for you. So let's say, for example, that I want to, um, I, I would like to quote and cite this area. Um, oh, see, that's why the text uh, option can be a little um, temperamental. And I want to quote and uh, cite this area. I would highlight the area that I want to and hop down here to generate citation. You can see not only is it going to create the quote and the in-text citation, it's also going to create the works cited citation. Now some of these mean, some of these will require editing. For example, it's not recognizing the space between some of these words. And this will generate as a dropped quote. You'll learn more about that as we move to in-text citation. But this is a great tool for you to take a little bit of the citation load off your plate when it comes to your assignments. As you move through, you will of course go to the final step, leave your comments in the video, um, and uh, 
complete your assignment there. I recommend that you spread these out over multiple days. Now, when you uh, move to an assignment, you can click this top button to see the assignment information. Now, uh, there will be, of course, your general instructions, and there will be a set of questions that you can um, think about as a starting point. These are related to the story themselves. You are not required to answer these questions, um, but you are more than welcome to. Um, and these are questions that are going to help you when it comes to the Socratic seminar exam portion um, of the course that you will be using these readings for. Um, you also, of course, can um, navigate to your scores over here. These will generate as they are released um, by me. Uh, and you can create notes and calendars and use these tools as as they are useful to you and use them to your advantage. The most common questions we get from students about perusal is, did I do it all? Am I done? And I think it's helpful for you to understand how perusal is going to score you. Um, so your annotations are scored based on quality, which means uh, leaving an annotation could be worth any number of points. High quality annotations are full credit. Um, lower than that, then you would see those things decrease. So many people like to add more than the required annotations just in case to make sure they have enough high quality comments to get full credit on that portion of the scoring. Um, you were also scored on your engagement. So how many, how, did you respond to people? Did people respond to you? Did you like comments? Did people like your comments? How much time did you spend in the assignment? How many times did you open the assignment? Um, these sorts of things also accumulate points for you. Now, in order to uh, earn 100 points, you can do any number of things uh, in, in order to get there. Your annotations are a big part. Quizzes, uh, if there's any response questions, those might also be a big part. Uh, but engagement is what is necessary to get up to that 100%. And it's possible to earn more than 100%, as a matter of fact. But uh, this is why it's really important for you to start your literature readings or your annotations early. That way you have plenty of time to return to the assignment and engage with the conversation. That way you are earning those high those high levels of points within perusal. The literature annotations are worth 15% of your course grade, which means they are a major component. So make sure that you are in there, you're asking questions, you're responding to your peers, and you are actively reading with each other. Uh, not only is that going to benefit your learning, but it's going to benefit that course average as well.